engine performance one test 12, which is an oxygen sensor thing. Um, let me ask you to begin with, before I do anything else, if um, I've got a, I'm looking at my oxygen sensor on my scan tool, and it's switching back and forth, rich and, rich and lean, rich and lean. It looks like camel humps, right? Up and down, up and down. You've got nice, rich and lean oxygen sensor. Okay, so all of a sudden, uh, my buddy does something out there under the hood while I'm watching the scan tool, and he stops a spark plug from firing. Maybe he gets his test light and hooks it to ground, and he wiggles it in there between the wire and the boot to the point where it shorts out the spark, and the spark plug quits firing. Of course, the injector's still working, but the spark plug's quit firing. What am I going to see the oxygen sensor do on that bank? It's going to make it run rich. Wait, hold on. going to compensate for the lack of lack of pressure so it's going to Well, I mean, I want to know what the oxygen sensor immediately sees. I'm not asking what the PCM is going to do. I'm asking what's the oxygen sensor going to see at that moment. See too much fuel. Lean. Okay. You said it's going to see too much fuel and he said I'm say it's no, no. Huh? Yeah, I say it's going to be lean, but we are talking about the the sensor, the first sensor, right now, the second. The some first people, one, yeah. yeah. And who said something over there? What did you say? It's, it's going to read. No, no. It's going to read. It's going to read pretty much lean. Really, why will it read lean? Because you guys are at odds with him, and I need to know. He said rich. You guys are saying lean. I'm not telling you who's right. I just want to know why, what you guys are thinking. I believe it's going to pick up that it's not bringing out enough exhaust, and so it's not having, it's pretty much not getting enough exhaust, so it's telling, it's telling it that it's, not enough there, and that's what the oxygen. That's sort of a foggy, vague. I, 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 you know, I think it is. I think I'll let him explain it. You can explain let him explain it. it. I think it's going to read get too much fuel because it's dumping all that fuel through the exhaust and just pumping it to the cylinder. Okay, so what is it that's going to read that? Oxygen. So the oxygen sensors. But the, what's the oxygen sensor smelling? It's smelling it. Well, I mean, what is it actually checking for? Huh? It's looking for the exhaust. Okay, here's the, here's, the, here's, here's the skinny on it. The oxygen sensor couldn't care less about fuel. It ain't looking for fuel. All it sees is air. You can run all kinds of fuel past it. If the fuel is mixed with air, it ignores the fuel and sees the air. So, and as soon as you see one that quits firing, all of that oxygen that's coming into the, that cylinder is going to go right out the exhaust and the oxygen sensor is going to pick that up. So you're going to see the oxygen sensor go lean. In spite of the fact that it's not the truth, the oxygen sensor is not smelling fuel. It don't know anything about fuel. Couldn't care less about fuel. Basically, the PCM infers the air-fuel mix by the amount of oxygen that the oxygen sensor sees in the exhaust. Everybody get that burned in. You got me? The oxygen sensor doesn't smell fuel. It has no earthly idea that fuel is even there. It just sees whether there's high oxygen or low oxygen. Now the titanium oxygen sensors that some of the Jeeps used to have on them were reading the temperature of the exhaust. And a cool exhaust is rich and a lean exhaust is hot. And they read backwards, they read upside down. Five volts was lean and zero volts was rich. But our regular oxygen sensors that we're usually talking about in these tests are reading one volt whenever they're rich and zero volts when they're lean. That's really important that you understand that. Uh, and don't get the idea that, you know, if I can just keep my mouth shut and get through this class and get out of here, I don't give a rip whether I learn anything or not, because you will crash and burn out there trying to fix cars if you don't learn what you're supposed to learn in here. And I'm trying the best I can to teach it to you, but about 50% of it's on you. Oxygen sensor cross counts can only be determined using what? A scan tool. It's got to have a scan tool to determine cross counts. Now, you could probably come up with some kind of a, of a time frame and count how many times it went back and forth between rich and lean, and you'd get an idea. Uh, you can tell when it's right just looking at it, but cross count numbers or something, or just another piece of data that a scan tool is going to give you. Uh, technician A says oxygen sensors can be tested using a test light or dwell meter or a scan tool. Technician B says conditions can occur that can cause the oxygen sensor to be fooled and give a false rich, rich or lean signal to the PCM. Uh, both those guys are right. Now, what I always wanted to do when I was working on vehicles, even before we had data stream, if I had a vehicle that came in blowing black smoke, 
running rich, blowing black smoke, that's hydrocarbons. The first thing I wanted to know is what's the oxygen sensor seeing? If it sees black, if I've got black smoke and the oxygen sensor is reading rich, and I know the oxygen sensor is not the cause of that. I know the oxygen sensor is just telling the truth, but the PCM is not able to do enough to compensate for fuel that's coming from somewhere else. All right, if I get one in here that's running too lean, and I know it's running lean, you know, because the exhaust is hot and the spark plugs are so white it'll scare you to death. Like you pull them out, you know, the spark plugs are just paper white, and it's actually you do it, you're getting, you know, indications that it's running lean. And the oxygen sensor is reading rich. The oxygen sensor may be a cause of that because it may be trying to correct for what it perceives as a rich condition. It may be pulling the fuel away. But it, won't, it can't do it the other way around. Yeah. Well, basically, if it's reading, see, whenever an oxygen sensor dies, unless it's a dead gum Chrysler. The oxygen sensor dies lean, usually. I mean, it goes lean. And sometimes they'll go lean for a little while, and then they'll come back, and they'll be working normally. And you may get one in here that you get a check engine light on, and it may say that you've got uh, oxygen sensor issues, and you may be looking, everything may be perfectly normal. Well, occasionally, oxygen sensor driving down the road, it'll just flatline for a while, and then it'll wake up and start working again. That'll just throw you for a loop sometimes if you had not seen it before. It's, like it's not as common as it used to be, huh? Yeah, like, I remember seeing something on scans where it was like bank one, you know, one of one on the driver's side, and then it was like, it was two over here. And I know there's like, there was just four of the oxygen sensors in the upstream. Oh, some the of them, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, it was just confusing why this one in the front was out, and then this one in the rear on the passenger side was out. Yeah. Tell you something else, if you've got some that are close enough together to where you can cross the wires mm -hmm. and get a, get left hook to right and right hook to left, it will go crazy. Uh -huh. It'll actually be like grandma and grandpa with an electric blanket that's got the controls crossed. You know, he keeps cranking his down, she keeps cranking hers up, she's burning him up and she's freezing to death. Yeah, you know, it's one of them kind of things that it'll just they'll just go opposite directions, you know. Um, which of these describes acceptable oxygen sensor cross counts? Uh, 128 to 136, 8 to 10 at 2,000 RPM, 5 to 10 every 10 seconds, or both B and C? B and C? Well, on number three, the answer to that one is going to be A. I guess that depends on your software. Uh, PO131, diagnostic trouble code is being discussed. Technician A says an exhaust leak upstream of HO2S bank one oxygen sensor could be the cause. Technician B says an extremely rich air fuel mixture could be the cause. Who's correct about that? That's technician B only. Now, if uh, you've got to know what PO131 is, there's something else I want to hit you guys with. All right. In relation to oxygen sensors, here's my exhaust. Let me just draw it just real simple. Here's my cat. I got an oxygen sensor here, I got one here, I got one here, and I got one here. Now, this is the fan. All right, if I was going to have you tell me which one of these oxygen sensors was which, as far as, you got choices here. You got HO2S, one, one, you got one, two, you got two, one, and you got two, two. Now look at that and tell me which one's which. Why is that important? If you're actually looking at an oxygen sensor, HO2S21, you better doggone well know which sensor that is on the system or you're going to be fixing the wrong sensor. First time we, these things came out was in 94 on Thunderbirds on the cars I worked on. And I got these numbers crossed up in my head and I was working on one trying to fix a code and I found out I was working on this sensor when I should have been working on that one crazy as all get out. All right, so tell me somebody. Bank one sensor one is going to be on this side. Yeah, depending on what? Huh? On the, if it's a, is it a Ford or a Chevrolet? Where's bank one? Which one's bank I'm one? I'm going to assume this is a Chevy. Is it always the same one? No. So you're saying bank one on the Chevy is going to be here. Isn't it? Yeah, that's great. So, so this is going to be one one. Yeah. And this is going to be one two. He's right. Okay. And this is right here is going to be bank two. So this is going to be two one, and that's going to be two two. Now on your Ford, this is bank one. So this is going to be one one on the Ford, and this is going to be two two. That's going to be two one, that's going to be two two. 
Better find out where Bank One is, or you won't know which sensor you're working on. And that's doggone important. Now you can get bumfuddled like that. I tell you something else. If you're supposed to have gone through school and you're supposed to learn how to do all this stuff, and you go to work somewhere, and somebody walks over here and asks you a question that you should know the answer to, and you say, "I don't know," then their confidence in you is going to go way down here. And they're going to say, "Well, I tell you what." They're going to tell the service rider off the side, just give them wall changes because I'm afraid that they're going to screw something up if we keep, you know what I mean? So I don't know is not a good answer. You need to know and you need to tell the truth about, you know, if you don't know, tell them you don't know, but it's liable to cost you. The thing about it is you need to get to know where you know as much as you can know. You know what I mean? You know, in the parts store, your guy that helps in the parts store sometimes is supposed to be the mechanical advisor that's a mechanic guy when they come in there and ask him a lot of times he won't say I don't know and even though he don't know mm -hmm. he'll just say give him an answer and it'll be wrong you ever seen that before uh, but you better have a right answer for whoever asked you the question all right uh, PO 132 diagnostic trouble codes being discussed technician A says an effective HO2S could be the cause technician B says an HO2S signal wire shorted to ground could be the cause what do you think about that? That's going to be C. If it's shorted to ground, if the signal wire is shorted to ground, or if it's got a connector that's been spread out because somebody shoved something in there and spread it out, if it ain't touching good, that's a tiny little whisper of current. Tell you what I did one time on a Chrysler. And uh, I like to tell stories in case you ever notice that. This Chrysler came in here, and we didn't have nothing to talk to it, and it was running rich. And so I took my meter, and I looked, and I noticed the oxygen sensor was running lean and it was reading lean and it was running rich and it was a one wire oxygen sensor. So what did I do? It was visibly running rich. So I unplugged the um, wires going to the oxygen sensor and I touched the battery terminal and I just pinched the oxygen sensor wire going to the computer in my fingers because it was just a naked bullet. And it started thinking, hey, we're running rich and it, the black smoke went away. So what did I know? <laughs> huh? Oxygen sensor was bad because I was I was the oxygen sensor at that point. I'm doing this with my fingers and the black smoke goes away. You know, it's not that complicated. Um, so it or no, I was just doing this right here and, and it was basically causing it to get something that considered a signal and it was making it, you know, clean up its act some. When the concentration of oxygen on the exhaust side of the thimble is low, a voltage of what is generated between the electrodes and that's 1O to 2O supposed to be about one volt on the sensors we're used to. A large amount of oxygen in the exhaust system causes the oxygen sensor to produce which of these? A large amount of oxygen in the exhaust system. At yeah, that's right. Um, you guys remember, uh, let's see, who was that that was working on that white F-150 that had rusted away that bolt and let the exhaust drop down? And it had a big... Uh, space between the header pipe and the manifold and it was it was right above the oxygen sensor it was causing the fuel trims on that side to be high you remember that because it had oxygen getting in there that was confusing the sensor that wasn't supposed to be there that's what he's talking about what does the post or downstream oxygen sensor measure the oxygen behind the converter. what they're saying is the amount of oxygen in front of it, but what I was always taught was the storage capacity, oxygen storage capacity of the catalytic converter. How much oxygen can the catalytic converter store? Uh, on that one, just put C, just because. If both of your oxygen sensors are in front and rear, uh, you're going to see a, something on that in a minute, are reading at exactly the same rate. It'll typically start throwing you a PO420 code or one of those that's giving, telling you a sense of catalyst. Of course, the catalyst can be contaminated and cause that too. When the oxygen sensor begins to produce a usable signal, the PCM enters what? Closed loop. That's when it's paying attention to the oxygen sensor. When it's not paying attention to the oxygen sensor, that's open loop. And what, what, what condition can you have? I'm driving down the highway and I'm going to make this thing go into open loop. What can I do to make it happen? Floorboard the accelerator. It goes into open loop. Here's another thing. Let's say I'm driving along and I've got black smoke that I've all of a sudden started getting because maybe I've got an oxygen sensor lead just scratching against ground somewhere. And if I floorboard the accelerator and it cleans up its act and it runs really good and then I let off and I've, I'm floating again, 
and it hunkers down and starts blowing black smoke again. I got a pretty good idea that when I'm kicking it into open loop, and everything is more like it's supposed to be. Now you can, if you're in a situation like that, and you know for sure that's what's wrong, you can ground out the oxygen sensor lead permanently so that it, I'm not talking about where it's just touching a little bit. It needs to be a dead short in the ground and then it will remain in open loop and it will run just fine. Uh, some of those dodges will hang at about six tenths of a volt and then they'll start trying to fix that and it'll buck and jerk and all that kind of stuff. Um, the primary use of the PCM for the oxygen sensor is to do what? Is it assisting cold startup? No. Uh, doesn't measure exhaust temperature on most vehicles. Uh, verifies engine temperature. It's going to be D. It's going to fine tune the air fuel mixture. All right. Upstream and downstream O2 sensors are used to measure what? Catalyst efficiency is a good answer. It's possible to test a heated oxygen sensor without running the engine. No. False. False. Wait. Can you change the oxygen though? Hmm? What's that now? Well, I would not be able to test it unless I pulled it off the car. You know what I mean? Oh. I mean, personally, I wouldn't, I'm telling you. Uh, you can't really test it with it on the car unless the engine running. You can't do that. Oh, I'm doing something here. All right. Uh, with the vehicle in closed loop, the following post-converter oxygen sensor pattern activity is seen. What do you think about that picture? Anybody know? Is that a good converter? A bad converter? A lazy converter? Anybody got any idea? What was I talking about? Earlier I was talking about if they're switching together, you got issues. That's a good converter, that's right. That's what I was trying to get you to say there. All right. Uh, with a vehicle in closed loop, the following post converter HO2 scope pattern activity is seen. Uh, what does that indicate? Yeah, you got a you got a converter issues if you're looking at that one right there. If it's and that's sort of a subjective thing, you know. Sometimes you're going to see some activity back there. If they're going together, that's the problem. See what I mean? All right. Hold on, I'm opening up something here. Uh, hopefully, it won't be a can of worms. I got something I got to show you guys in a little bit. All right, hold on. I'm doing, opening that right there. All right, let's go to the next one. A wide band oxygen sensor needs to be heated to what temperature before it starts to work? 1400. Huh? 1400. 1400 degrees. You remember that one, don't you? 1400 degrees. The two internal chambers of a dual cell wideband oxygen sensor are what? In, they're the uh, air, reference. air reference and diffusion. Very good, Brian. Uh, number 17, when the exhaust is rich, the PCM applies what pump, what kind of current into the pump cell? Negative. It's going to supply a negative current. That's going to be one if you're not familiar with those, you're not going to. And when it's lean, it supplies a positive current in the pump cell. That's not rocket science. Um, a dual uh, cell wideband oxygen sensor can be tested using what? All of the above. Any of the above. That's right. All of the above. In some hybrid vehicles, a wideband oxygen sensor can cause a PCM to enter the clo enter closed loop as soon as the engine starts. I mean, like right away. Uh, the conventional oxygen sensor has a reading of 900 millivolts on a multimeter. What does that indicate? Anybody know? None of these. Anybody else got a different one? That's a rich exhaust. If it's close to a volt, it's going to be a rich exhaust on a conventional oxygen sensor. And how hot does a conventional oxygen sensor have to be before it will start to work? Brian, you remember? 600 degrees. Oh. 
Uh, one advantage of a planar type oxygen sensor is what is that? Faster light off time. It, it starts working quicker, and that's a good thing. 24. When the air fuel ratio is expressed as lambda, a lambda number less than one indicates what kind of exhaust? Rich. If it's if you see that lambda is 1.0, that's for that's your right in the middle where it needs to be. When it goes less than that, it's rich. When it goes more than that, it's lean. So it's like a lambda, lambda, omega mu. <laughs> Yeah. What did you say it's supposed to be? It's supposed to be 1.0. If you're looking at the lambda on your scan tool, if it goes lower than 1.0, it's going to be rich. It's going to be indicating rich. If it goes above it, it's going to be indicating lean. Remember that. That's, that's, hard, that's easy to uh, forget if you don't have some kind of a memory bug. The heater control circuit, uh, excuse me, the heater circuit and a wideband oxygen sensor heats the sensor to about 12 or 1400 degrees. We already knew that. What's 25? 25 is basically going to be. Uh, Oh, oh, here we go. Yeah, we missed that one. Technician A says a wideband oxygen sensor, also called lean air fuel, can detect air fuel ratios from as rich as 10.1 to as lean as 23.1, or, you know, 23.21, not 0.1. Technician B says a conventional oxygen sensor cannot detect the exact air fuel mixture. Both those guys are right. And when air fuel uh, ratio is expressed in lambda, uh, huh? 27. Yeah, that's going to be your. Uh, Single cell wideband oxygen sensor. What do you think that answer will be? Guess at it. What do you think it is? Sensor. How about air fuel? You'll hear them talk. You're gonna hear them call that sometimes. When the air fuel ratio is expressed in lambda, a lambda number of one means what? One volt. Means fourteen point seven one. Oh, okay. That's your stoichiometry. If voltage from the heater circuit bleeds into the nernst uh, cell, I'm sorry, the mill will not come on. Is that true or is that false? False. Anybody got any idea? You know? Look, everybody's too quiet. Somebody needs to find that out for me. Because I don't know. A wideband oxygen sensor heater can draw how much current in amps? 8 to 10, 8 to 10 amps. Uh, the heater in an oxygen sensor is going to be the one where both of the wires are the same color. If they're brown, if they're black, if they're white, you know. These for hybrids and white bands? Yeah, it's going to be the, uh, them, yeah, the hybrid's going to be a different critter. But the uh, Toyotas and stuff, a lot of them have got wide band sensors. A lot of the newer, you know, later model cars have got wide band sensors. So they always call those wide band air. Uh, fuel sensors, typically. So pretty much like two things in one. 